So today I'm making up some characters. We've got a module that I've made up and I need to have some pre-gen NPCs of first level. So what I've done is I've got some ideas in my head as to the type of makeup. So I'm just going to make up a character today, or at least two characters, and we'll see where we go from there. As I said, I've got some ideas, but the dice don't lie. So the method chosen today, 46, discarding the one because uh, I have an idea of what I'm trying to achieve and if I need to move the, the values around then the fixed stats sort of doesn't help. Um, so let's get this moving. So this character, I'm thinking, is my fighter. So I'm tossing up 16 strength or con, with 15 being the other score. But what I want to do is have 14 in charisma, and then um, 9 for wisdom. So I think that's pretty much, oh well then 13 and 13 for intelligence and dexterity. So that's what I'm thinking at the moment. Deciding that um, the 10% bonus for experience points outweighs the additional hit point modifier. Uh, this has gone with these stats. So the idea of this particular fighter is that um, he or she is going to be from the Theocracy of the Pale, a uh, location within the World of War of uh, Greyhawk. And I wanted this particular fighter to be someone who chose to go against the system because it was wrong. The Theoxy of the Pale, for those of you who don't know, are sort of like a religious hierarchy that um, like to uh, remove everybody that's not the same religion, the same race, the same, they're purists. So that's where we're going with this. And he got sick and tired of it, or well, found out what it was all about, and then made the decision to just move on. So at this stage whether the wisdom is 9 or 13, but I kind of like the idea of a slightly above intelligent and just a regular sort of wisdom for the fighter. And it'll be a utility fighter, so someone that'll have a bill with um, a couple of swords, well a sword, dagger, spear, maybe a bow, that sort of thing. But we'll get onto the next part in a moment. So we've got the stats for the first character. So let's get on with the stats for the second character. Okay, so what I've done is I've made up two characters that are going to be NPCs in an adventure I am putting together. And so this particular group, these two, I want it as a pair, or at least as a bit of a, a duo. So 
The first one is Loris Freeman, a fighter. Lawful good, first level, from the Theocracy of Pale. So his background is that he was one of the, um, the more specialised knights. And the Theocracy of Pale, for those of you who don't know, is a bit of a, theoc is a, well, a theocracy. And they don't particularly like uh, other religions or other beliefs and so on. So they look disfavorably upon various subhumans, non-humans, demi-humans, etc, etc, etc. So I fill out most of the sheet. I will end up filling most all of it out eventually. But um, I just wanted to get the bare bones together. So he was originally rounding up people and had a crisis of conscience between duty and obligation and, and all of that sort of thing. And pretty much that's where he met the off, his offsider, who was on that uh, on the chopping block. So armed with chain and shield, armor class four, base armor class four. Doesn't have a dexterity bonus, so his stats end up being 16, 9, 12, 13, 15, and 14 charisma. I wanted him to be a little bit uh, uh, charismatic in a way, either uh, intimidating because he's just big, he's a six foot uh, soldier, and just a little bit uh, not quite paladin level, but you know, up there. Armed with longsword, spear, dagger, and short bow. I wanted him to be a utility fighter. So with the longsword for the majority of close combat fighting, anti-charge weapon of spear, dagger, because you always need something that's short and stabby, and a short bow. Because you might need the range one day. Fill out the armor class adjustment grouping. So his offsider. I suppose I should go into uh, the equipment. Just some basics. They don't have a lot of money between them. Rob very average for height and weight. He's 19 years old. So he's a young fella, but he does get the 10%. So that's good for having 16 strength. All right, so his offsider is an elf female who by correlation would be probably about the same age. Sapphire Moonglow, also known as Switch, a magic user thief. Not going to be a great magic user, so more in line with uh, a thief that can do magic and magic stuff. 15 intelligence, 15 dex. Again with the reasonable charisma. Leather. I'm a class 7, 4 hit points. Oh, it's worth noting that um, Loris has 8 hit points in total. Short sword and a sling. So what I did with the multi-class, I went with the higher value of the weapon proficiency, and I averaged the amount of money available between the two different classes. Because obviously the magic user has a different gold piece range from the thief, and so averaged it out. I did do random for the spells, so read magic, detect magic, standard, followed by friends, ventriloquism, and mending. And it sort of actually goes with that whole thief that can do some magic and trickster style work. Not trickster in terms of the chaotic neutral or um, you know, intentionally going out playing tricks, doing you know, uh, practical jokes, but definitely along the lines of throwing the voice in a different location or trying to charm a squad of soldiers and just 
general stuff. Like I said, I randomly rolled these. Normally I would have picked them, but I thought, oh, what the hey, the dice don't lie. And I thought, oh, that's a good grouping in the end. I can make that work. If I can make that work, I'm sure that other players can make that work. So of course, the kits. I'm sure I saw these, these tools. And because they're a duo, they've just bought stuff for each other in terms of um, holding it. So this one has the, the two packets of iron rations. Sling bullets. She's a little bit short. She's four foot four. And she's 76 pounds. Wow. For those of you in metric, that's like what? Um, 160 kilos? No, the other way, 30 kilos. So I'll fix out some of these things, but that's all right. I've got the main gist of it. So switch was rescued by Loris, and then the two sort of formed a friendship. They're both on the run, having to escape the theocracy of Pale, because the actual adventure is set around the um, the counties and duchies of Ernst, which is in that particular region. So it makes sense that they're from that area. The Gambodge Forests, which is where the uh, elves mostly hang out. Switch didn't really belong there, having grown up in a more of a human settlement and then forced away. So yeah, these are the characters. These are two of the pregens. I might throw in um, the character Balrimi that I made up earlier, ages ago, as one of the NPCs. And I want to put together about eight NPCs for this particular adventure. All right, so that's just making these characters. Still got a few nuts and bolts to fill out, but that's all right. I'll get that sorted. But it's the character concept I like, with a bit of a background. I'm really liking putting backgrounds onto uh, characters, and I think it can really help in cementing it with uh, a region or an area. If you can get something that uh, that puts a link or a, a grounding in that in that um, that region. What I did notice, and I didn't really notice it before, is how good the bullets were. The sling bullets. Actually quite good. Okay. Thank you very much. This is making a character number two. Sort of. Okay. Like, subscribe, comment on what you think. What do you reckon of those spells? I can see them working. Friends, ventriloquism and mending. Alright, thank you very much. Good evening and stay safe.